Hey, it's Elizabeth here with another uh, fun video um, podcast, whatever the crap it's called. Anyway, uh, today we're talking about email lists um, and putting email lists together or just lists in general. Um, inside of HubSpot, you've got a lot of options when it comes to lists. And it's actually one of my favorite features inside of HubSpot, which is silly, but I love it. Um, but when you're emailing, you want to make sure you're emailing the right people. Well, how do you do that? Um, a couple of ways to think about it is obviously you can capture people based on like life cycle stage or create date, um, or maybe they've interacted with a piece of content or something like that. Um, so the list that you curate in HubSpot will depend on what you want to deliver, what you want to nurture, the intent of that. Um, but not only do you need a good delivery list, send list, recipient list, there we go. Equally important, if not more important, is the suppression list, right? So who do you not want this to go to? Now, we all know that data, having a clean data like set in HubSpot would be a dream, right? Um, in reality, you might be able to get to a B or a C, maybe an A if you're lucky. Um, so I like using suppression lists to kind of double down and make sure that the, you're communicating to the right people when you're talking email lists. So let's talk about what should go or what you should use as a suppression list. Um, one of the obvious ones, and these are just called trainings, is an unsub and bounce list. So this is an active list inside of HubSpot. In HubSpot, you can create two different types of lists. So the one that you'll want to look for um, when creating an unsub and a bounce is an active list. And what this means is this, this list will change over time, right? So as people fall or meet the criteria or don't meet it, they will either go on the list or fall off the list. So in this scenario, we've got unsubscribed equals true and hard bounce reason is known because we don't want to email those people. It's not worth it. Uh, just make the active list, keep it in HubSpot, use it as a suppression list on your marketing emails because that way you're double down. You're just doubling down, making sure that people who don't want to hear from you don't hear from you um, and it'll improve your deliverability. The other one that I recommend um, making is a client list. So if it's something that's a marketing initiative, um, something where you want to, you know, do some type of marketing nurture and you don't want clients on there, uh, make a client list. If you are confident that the data inside of HubSpot is correct, you can use an active list. Another advantage to HubSpot is to create a static list. So if you wanted to do a client static list, for example, you could do that. Um, and then you would have to add filters. So you could use data inside of HubSpot and then add filters like contact properties and then maybe life cycle stage if you're using this, if you trust it. Um, but it's been my experience that sometimes this isn't accurate, right? Some, somebody along the way has forgotten to change someone from an opportunity to a customer in HubSpot, something like that. Um, so another way to do this would be to do an import from what other you know, software you have, or um, maybe you have things in HubSpot. Maybe there's a customer service rep or account managers. You can have, task them to go through and make sure their book of business is updated correctly. Um, and then you can pull that client list. A couple other things to keep in mind is maybe you want to exclude people that are in active deals or something like that so that the only communication they're getting from your company is marketing. Um, you could create an active list for things like that as well. Um, but let's make a active list for a uh, marketing nurture. And we'll type in a name just an, as an example. If you want to put in a description, you can do so as well. Sometimes it's helpful, especially when you are working on a large team. And then I am going to go in and add some of those uh, clients. I want create date is equal to, there we go. And I am going to do a marketing, I'm, this is a pretend scenario. Um, I'm going to do a, a marketing nurture to all of Drew's contacts, for example. Um, not that you would ever use this scenario, but I wanted to show how easy it was to create an active list, grab the correct amount of people, save the list, 
um, and then go and use it in your marketing email. Um, sometimes you got to refresh the screen to get your uh, list to pop up, but HubSpot will keep working and this list size will calculate once it's done uh, scrubbing your data and building out that list for you. And then once you have the lists available, you can come into your email and let's say this email, this is the one we built in a previous, um, previous podcast. Um, you can come in and put on your training nurture example and then use your exclusion lists, right? To then put on here the people that you don't want to send to, right? Like I don't want the unsubs and bounces and I don't want, um, the client list. And then I want to make sure when I'm sending to impact and increase deliverability, you don't want to send to unengaged contacts, right? Um, so there's a little bit of an issue over here. Again, this is test data. Um, so we're not working with real world examples. However, if you come to this, this uh, screen and you see that you've got zero out of 49 recipients receiving your email, there's an issue. Um, Typically in HubSpot, you need to come in and mark those people as marketing contacts. You also may not have permission to email them, something like that. Um, but the point is HubSpot will at least set you on the right path to figuring out why these people aren't going to be emailed. Um, and then you can, before you even review and send, I highly recommend looking at this estimated recipients and addressing any issues that come up along the way. If you needed to mark these people as marketing contacts, for example, you could do so at this stage, um, but that's something you can address as a one-off example. Um, but because you have these as active lists, you'll always want to make sure and you check this when you come to this tab. Um, if they're static lists, it could be a one and done type thing because the beauty of the static list is once you're, you meet the list criteria, you're on it forever. The active list, you may come onto the list if you meet the criteria, or fall off based on, you know, whatever that list is. Um, so make sure you come in, double check that list uh, before you hit send. But anyway, that's just a couple ways to think of lists inside of HubSpot. What we recommend, um, you know, for impacting deliverability and making sure that your marketing initiatives get into the right hands at the right time. That's all I have for today. Thank you. And I uh, hope you found this helpful. Watch the video if you want to see the, the demo inside of HubSpot. Um, and until then, see ya.